I'm doing the Level 5 Management Programme as I've been in print now for four years and would like to extend my career and move forward into management. I don't currently have any formal education, so uh, for me it's just the missing piece of the jigsaw. I'm here more to learn about the industry as a whole, not just in my department, but outside of that, so external sources. It's really good to network with other people as well. It's an opportunity to better myself and hopefully put something back into the print industry. So what I'm going to do today, I've got half an hour to indoctrinate you with uh, 17 years of webmark experience and my time before it when I knew Cathy is, who was in the HR department at what is now Polestar, what was part of the Maxwell Communications Corporation when I was a Sprog. Um, and all the way through she's always been very passionate about people and, and really helped me in my early days of my career and you're kind of in your early mid days of your careers and if there's anything I can do to help please do not hesitate to get in touch. So what I'm going to try and do is give you uh, an insight into how you maximise your today while building a career in print because the print industry is a fantastic opportunity for everybody. End of. Anybody who doesn't think it should get out of it now because it is fantastic for everybody who's in this room. Christ alive, I've had more fucking... Oh, that's the other thing. She's swearing. <laughs> I, I often try not to, I always comes out, and apologies first, it is going to be fast, it will be slightly disorientating, and it may be controversial, but fuck it, it works. <laughs> so what are you going to get listening from a man, a proud man from Barnsley? Most people aren't proud coming from Barnsley, I very much am, rambling on for a while. Well, I'm hoping you will see what's turned me, as <laughs> Cathy said, this was me. This was me stereotype. That's what I had to do. I had to wear suits and ties, and I always fucking hated it. And, but to get a job in those days, you had to wear suits and ties. These days, you don't have to. You can be yourself. And in fact, there's a very distinct advantage of being yourself because at the end, as I say, you need to be distinctive if you're going to create comparative advantage. You do the same shit as everybody else, you are not different and people want different. So I don't mean go wacky because it's, you know, wacky thing to do. I mean, be true to yourself. You can do it these days. What I saw in those days, the blue lines are under capacity in the industry. That's taken from the BPIF. It's the same then as it is now. Huge amounts of uh, companies, the blue companies, working under capacity. Me, poor bastard that I was, had to fill that capacity at Polestar, as is now, that with 27 web offset presses. And at 6 o'clock on a Saturday morning, oh yes, uh, I used to get a spreadsheet passed through in physical written form from DHL to fill next week's and the week after's capacity, the slots on them web presses. That was my world. And so I thought there's a fucking better way of doing that than this. I had 15 people running around the, the country. I did 65,000 miles, business miles a year, spent more time in my car than I did seeing being at home a, awake or asleep. And so what I did in 1996 was set up Webmart. And Webmart was nothing to do with the internet because at that time it was in California. Um, it was some information superhighway. Now you look at it, you go, oh, of course, everybody knows it was something to do with the internet marketplace. No, it was Web Offset, because I am a specialist in Web Offset, and I love Web Offset. And so it was a Web Offset marketplace. I started up, and I decided from day one that I would not borrow money. And the reason for that is two or three things. Uh, one is I'm a tight Yorkshireman. I fucking hate paying interest. Um, the second thing is I'm quite independent, and if you borrow money off people, you lose some independence. The third thing is it keeps you lean and mean as an organisation. You've got spare cash to throw around. You just look at the dot-com era, you look at all the kind of VC stuff, the th people throw money away. But the p fact is it, it drives the discipline, the thrift, the frugal innovation that you need. You don't need a lot of money to create things these days. It cost me 10 grand to set up, you could do it now with three or 400 quid. Now, netbook, internet, you know, URL, you know, all those kind of things. Um, so this is what it was when it first started, a rag bag of kind of stuff all over the place, and this is what we are now. And 
there aren't that many people there, but they're all very special. And obviously there's some of them in the, room, in, in the room here on the course with you. Each person is special, from the receptionist all the way through to the accounts, to the account management team, to the supply chain management team, everybody in their own unique way. And obviously we, all of those people bundled together creates competitive advantage. And then we scale them using lots of these. That's my desk on the right hand side. We've got lots of servers all over the place. That's where the new world is, is out there in a virtual world, not in a physical world. Um, so those are the kind of key metrics about ourselves. 27 million turnover, uh, three yellow sheds, East Kilbride, Barnsley and Bista, uh, 47 people. And this is what the shed looks like now. That's a normal industrial unit. You don't have to have something that's wow. I mean, it really was a fucking industrial unit. And that's the, obviously the warehouse doors and all that kind of stuff. So. Moving on to Webmart, our strategy is to be seen as the world's best print services agency, end of. And also is doing good at the same time. Look holistically at what the impact that your business has, not just what happens inside your fucking box. That, that's immaterial to me. It's a byproduct of what you do and how the value you deliver outside your box. That's all it, that's all it is. So. I always say it as Northern Principles. I realise in a Southern-based audience that may not always uh, go down well, but these are Northern Principles running through business. We do not take forever to learn to trust people. We trust them from day one. Then they've got two choices. They either live up to that trust or they lose that trust, in which case you can't work with them. Simple. Don't have to wait a lifetime to get used to them. But the, it, it comes in really quickly then, that this, this engagement, the sharing information, sharing data, etc. Honesty, being direct, don't fuck about. You know, if you've got to say something, don't take weeks and have countless meetings. Be honest with it. If you're doing the right things for the right reasons, then they've got to respect you for it. And you can get things sorted out much, much, much faster. Be very friendly, obviously. You want to enjoy yourself. In world-class businesses, people enjoy themselves. They work hard. Of course they work hard. But they actually really actively want to come in at, uh, uh, to work and want to be there. Going back to the engagement thing talked about earlier on. Absolutely fucking critical. And do a fundamentally good thing. If you're doing fundamentally bad things, but really effectively, that isn't good. You know, doing the wrong, going the wrong way twice as fast doesn't make it the right way. So think, think about what you're, what you're about and why you're there. I always look at businesses as games of snakes and ladders. Fucking easy, isn't it? You start at the bottom, you're getting up to the top, and that's where the strategic direction and all those kind of things are. And you want to then find the ladders and avoid snakes, because you get there faster. So this training course is a ladder. You're meeting a lot of new people, new ideas, et cetera, et cetera. You will avoid snakes as a consequence of that because you won't go through the same stupid processes that other people have gone and failed at because it, avoid, it helps you avoid snakes. So if you think of it as that, it's not really tricky. What I'm going to try and do is um, <coughs> show you how we use innovation, how we use lateral thinking, creativity, to create that unique if you like, je ne sais quoi, that Webmart is about when, you, when everybody touches. So what I would suggest you do while, you, while you're listening to this, get your thinking hats on. How can you bring, copy anything that's in here? Everything. Every single idea, copy it in your business if it helps you. How you can differentiate your size of everywhere the fuck you live. <laughs> I would, I would strongly recommend, and this is one of the things that I've found it, it, uh, as being a very useful trait all the way through, don't listen to people who've been there before. Don't listen to these non-executive fucking wankers that sit there and tell you what it used to be like when they ran ICI. The truth is, ever since 2008, the world has changed. Ever since the internet, the world has changed. Anybody who ran a business before either of those two things is pointless. It's em empathy, understanding that, not just inside your business, outside, to customers, to suppliers, and trust. Because the most efficient way of working, bar none, is trust. Got a problem? You ring up a supplier and say, look, I've got a problem, can you sort it out? You, because they've got trust with you, they'll sort it out. If you've got a problem with the customer, say, look, I've got a bit of a problem, can we work with you? They'll sort it out in a fraction of the time. So even if you don't naturally trust people, it's the most efficient way of working. So use your rational kind of brain and start trusting people because there is no better way of doing it. And we look at working at three th things. This is our triple bottom line um, as a business, and we measure every one of these. Um, and we look to maximize added value, because it's not always financial, but it is added value. It's the value you add during a process. And this also works not only for ourselves. The most important people in Webmart's world are suppliers. End of. And I tell all my customers that. 
because if you look at it, to, for us to deliver a world-class opportunity to our customers, whatever it is that they want to buy, we've got to be more engaged with our suppliers than anybody else because we need to know where the capacity, the capability, the innovation, da 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 If you go going to speak to BMW or world-class companies like that, they say between 70 and 80 percent of the added value that they deliver in their cars comes from their suppliers. Well, I can fucking guarantee that you're not as good as BMW at harvesting it. So there's huge opportunity for working with your suppliers to deliver to your customers what you want to do. And so that's why I put suppliers number one, customers number two, because they're a subset of our supply chain quality, and then us number three. Because if we deliver value, we always look after ourselves. It's, it's, you know, we don't have to think about ourselves. We don't really spend an awful lot of time thinking within our box. We always think outside our box first. The three things, intellectual maximisation of the added value, emotional and of course, financial. Well, if you do those three things for an individual, or for a client, or for a supplier, or for any peer around you, you can't go wrong. If you're maximizing those three things, really, really simple. The truth of the matter is, you've got to set big targets, because never, ever, ever, ever does a company outperform its ambition. If you want a 4% growth, you'll get a fucking 4% growth. If you want a, you'll not get a 40% growth, because you're not thinking in that way. Now, if you set a 40% growth target and you get 27%, it's a shitload better than you could ever do by thinking incrementalist. It makes you think outside the convention, contra think contrarian, think laterally around things by setting those targets. The key thing that you've got to realise is whatever role you're in, you have got a boss already, and that is you. The most important thing about successful, being successful is self-discipline. Because you can't be pushed to be successful. You've got to need it, and you've got to set the tools in place. Because there's a huge amount of failure. There's a huge amount of ten tenacity you need. There's a huge amount of all the other things. You've got to be self-disciplined to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning and push that extra hour and try things differently, despite the fact that you don't want to. And every sinew in your body says, go to sleep and, and leave it there. Because that is what makes successful people successful. If you haven't got self-discipline, you'll be in middle management all your fucking life. Seth Godin, if you've not read him, subscribe to his blog. Bam, 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 bam. One of, one of the things that the, the bottom one on here, if, when you take on a project, you finish it. If anybody has to chase it, you've failed. If you've agreed a time, fucking do it before that time. I don't care if it means an all-nighter. Do it. If they ever have to chase you, you've failed. You haven't got the self-discipline, you haven't got the systems, you haven't got whatever you fucking need to do it. And that's the one thing that differentiates people who are highly successful and, and achieve things from people who are not, who are just there. So, maximising intellectual value. We work hard as you would imagine from a northern kind of base company. We don't know uh, that. We have enjoyable experiences at the same time. So we have creative rooms. Different rooms make you think differently. So all our rooms have got a theme and they, f they feel different. This is our pioneers room. This is a Elizabethan war room in our office in Bicester. And so if you want to think creatively, then you've got to be expect, expect people to call you stupid and because they're, they're thinking linearly and it's contrarian thinking. Now we have this wonderful thing called big data. If you don't know about big data, discover it very, very quickly because that is the future of the print industry, is to combining intelligent data with the physical print that we all manufacture. Understand how you can build that into your customer proposition, into your supply chain proposition, into your business, because that is the kind of IP that you need in the future. And this is what we're doing, obviously, within the wonderful world of webmark. And I mean, places that are more relaxed. One of the key things is the brightest people give the biggest opportunities to and support them in failure. Do not fucking dump your problems on them. By the nature of the beast, innovation is not logical and easy. It is always, these days, counterintuitive and difficult. Because if it's logical and easy, everybody's done it. It's no fucking competitive advantage. That's doing the same shit as everybody else. If it is counterintuitive and difficult, it is a place that nobody else has gone. And you put your brightest people there, they will fail. You have to fail on counterintuitive and difficult fucking solutions. You have to. It's a truism. And so if you, they are going to fail in doing that, but support them and they will find the right way. The good thing about it is there's a huge amount of free world-class training out there. All of those are free. Harvard put all their things online. edX is where they harvest it all. Khan Academy, anything that you want to know about it. TED, it's like YouTube for bright people. And then get podcasts. Get podcasts on, Peter Day's World of Business, roll the Radio 4 ones. It'll create all of the kind of thinking that you do. And then use voice notes to email them to yourself or to your PA or to any member around you as you're going 
going along so you never forget them. This is Maslow's pyramidal hierarchy of needs. These are the kind of things that you work up to maximise the intellectual and emotional and financial return. Do not, there's not an awful lot in there you'll see about money. Because actually money is a means to end. It's fuck all. It doesn't really mean anything. It's about how you get people up to the top of that hierarchy so that they are self-fulfilled, of course, but they are creative. They are fulfilling the maximum potential that they've got within your organisation. So have a look at that. It's out on Tinterweb. There's shitloads about it. And I think the key thing here is that engage people. I've put down here, the people in this room are not your enemy. They are your network. These are people who will take you where you want to go because you're all sharing the same shit here. It's rather like a degree. University friends stay forever because you shared stuff. You, the more you share in here about the problems you've got, the hassles you've got, the opportunities that you've done, the things that work brilliantly, the more they will engage and the more they will help you. The more you give, the more you get. These are not rivals. These are your friends. Uh, this is Marcus, my first graduate I took on, and he, bless him, um, it w was put up with uh, me when I was in my first angry stage of uh, growing the business. And uh, now he's got his own print management company in Australia, uses our software, work with him. We trade about £2 million pounds a year with him. So he doesn't even have to work within your business because these people will help you wherever they are. You don't have to employ them for them people to help deliver value to you. Unusual locations, we've seen them inside the business. For me, I always prefer to go outside. I think better walking on hills. Work doesn't have to take place in the workplace. Just go out and find, find yourself, find where you work best. Sharing insight, obviously we could talk about KPIs and metrics. This is something that I do on, first thing on a Monday morning, every Monday morning. Live rankings, each individual has live rankings up on the big screens. We have big screens in each of the offices. Share every metric, updated every two minutes. Emotional return. Do good, do well and do good at the same time. We have our own charity. We donated £225,000 the last few years into that charity. Basically, the money that we get on the cash we have on our account, we don't have to do anything for. Um, and it's about £35,000 a year. It goes into there. We haven't done anything. We haven't done it. We haven't worked for it. So it goes to charity. And we have the separate charity, the Webmark Charitable Trust, that does that. But it allows us to do nice things as well and allows us to share uh, a good, so we can do good as individuals and we can do. Uh, well at the same time rather than having to wear sackcloth and, and stuff like that so and it, particularly if you're trying to attract the youngest people it really is important to get that moral dimension in your business that kind of uh, pioneering spirit and that kind of doing good so if you can engage them on that level as well as on the on the making money that's happy days um, set of moral code for the business very important this is my rankings everybody ranks each other twice a year we're just about to do it next week about the sharing criteria not about how well we're performing as individuals doing our role and our KPIs and PIs and blah blah blah, blah about how well we share information with each other and the only one that's made public is mine and that's mine it's on the website it's on the blog and everybody gets access to that so you can see that's how I keep real in the way that we, I perform people want to work with a team rather than for somebody. If you, you know, when you're old, people go say, well, Oh, who do you work for? They don't give a fuck who you work for. It's what do you do? Who are you working with? What's the best thing about it? It's a changed world that we live in rather than uh, the old times. So, sweets is another thing. Put sweets in everything. Every letter that goes out goes out with sweets. It's the be best thing I, I, I've ever done. Uh, but everything goes out with a gift. All pay slips have a little note on it saying thank you for your hard work. Uh, we, every anniversary we give them a little something for, uh, rather like the Queen, they have two, uh, two birthdays, the Webmark birthday and the, uh, their own birthday. They get their own birthday off, they can go have a free day's holiday uh, and they get sort of, a gift on uh, something like that. And that works for suppliers as well, that's Mark Simpson of Simpson Print, supplier of the quarter. And we, we harvest all of the information for both the suppliers, how well our suppliers score us, and that's shared, and how well our clients score us every day, every week, every month. And we look at the trends, and I reply to every feedback score that we get personally myself. Uh, in synopsis then, business, it used to be alpha male. Fucking hell, hardy, strongest, fastest, you know, kill them, fucking slaughter, all barbar Conan the Barbarian type thing. The truth of the matter is now the emphasis that you need to have is female. The traits of females are much stronger in this collaborative world that we live in. If you don't believe me, look at this. This is a list of traits that was crowdsourced from people in a, the biggest survey of that. Who wants to work with people on the left? I fucking don't. Would you, why would you? You'd have to be mental. The, the skills on the right are the ones that you a actively want. And yet we all think we have to be fucking hard, da, 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 you know, all this kind of shit. Truth is that it's not. It's, that's why I think anything, all these non-execs who, you know, listen the way it used to be, it's total bollocks. It's inverted from what it is. And if you fall, go down the wrong way, you'll, you'll carry on going and you'll be dead in 10 years. Guarantee it. 
people used to be invincible as managers. You're not. Be honest. Be honest about your failures. That gets more respect. Financial return, lastly, reassuring you. Don't look after yourself. Look after others and they will always look after you. That is absolutely the truth. Don't chase money. Be the best. Just be the fucking best you can and money chases you rather than you chasing it. Collaboration always beats individual performance. You have to share these days because the more you give, the more you get. It is a fact. So we harvest all this added value and we share the surplus through the sexy scheme, the senior executive incentive scheme, which is the surplus because we have this concept called enough in Webmart. Webmart doesn't have to make shitloads of money. I don't have to make a stupid amount of money. I don't want a yacht, I don't want a second house. I'm fucking happy with my 17-year-old motorbike and my Lexus. Happy days. So what we've got is a business run on Marxist principles, which is not conventional, I admit, but it actually does work. And if you bear with me for the next minute, um, you will see why it does actually make sense. Because the truth of the matter is capitalism is fantastic at making money and appalling at everything else. So what we do is we use capitalism to make it, we use Marxism to share it out. So we, we keep within the web marts, and you'll see if you do look on the company's house, we make £400,000 every fucking year, which is happy days, because that's the retained profits that we have within the business. Thereafter, after that 400000 is retained, that's the retention line, between 400000 and a million, half goes to the team, half goes to me. Above a million, it all goes to the team, nothing to me. What it meant in the last year, 2012-13, is that everybody in the business got 23.81% of their base salary as a bonus. We're aiming for 40% this year. So our people, in synopsis, are the only differentiator. Fact, 87% of our customers come from referral. And sweets are a big part of that. It's true, try it. Try it. Um, Every touch point with a customer has got to be special. Look at everything, every time you touch a customer or a supplier, look at the way you can differentiate it. Because the truth of the matter is, if you are not distinct in going forward, you will be extinct because you can buy it cheaper elsewhere. And this is the key for yourself as an individual, for your businesses, for the markets that you serve. And in synopsis, the key attributes that you need to have, altruism, self-sacrifice and kindness goes an awful long way. So if you can practice it, you will absolutely go wherever you want to go. Uh, hope you've had something to think about and thank you. My presentations were brilliant this morning. They were really lively, kept everyone involved. All very interesting, all really dynamic, with loads of great ideas. Motivational and inspirational, and they helped tell us a lot about what the graduate programme is about. Simon from Webmart was just so exciting and sort of passionate about print. It's nice to see there's still people about like that. A very different guy and, you know, uh, how he views the business world is uh, it's really interesting. And um, we really liked his funky approach to his business. Um, although his uh, language was slightly industrial, um, his approach was really refreshing. Good, really very interesting, very exciting. I feel a lot more comfortable about the course, a lot better about actually doing the course. Everyone's really friendly and supportive. So enthusiastic, not just about the programme, but about the industry in general. I felt like I've learned a lot from the whole experience. So yeah, I couldn't want for anything else.